Welcome to Health Oddity, the show that strips away the jargon and hype surrounding all things health and fitness to help you live a long, strong and energetic life. Lining up at the bar this week, here's Peter Lant, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. Hello and welcome to Health Oddity, episode 103. Yeah, different uh, intro today. It's me. I've been given the responsibility, the reins of uh, the reins of power. Um, it's just me and Peter today. Uh, so we're going to welcome you into our little boudoir. Uh, just, <laughs> you, <laughs> just using, <laughs> we haven't used the word boudoir for a while, have we, Peter? We, we haven't, no. It's a good um, one. So yeah, James is away on holiday. It's, uh, see, see, when I don't turn up, it's because I've forgotten. Uh, when James doesn't turn up, it's actually because he intended to. So, um, so it's going to be me and Peter just kind of going through everything, uh, some musing, some general thoughts on fitness and where are, where we are in terms of our own mindset and what we've been doing some, with some clients. And it's just going to give us uh, an opportunity to catch up uh, and have a good a good good chat. Uh, in the meantime, um, being a, episode 103, um, if you haven't checked out the other 102 episodes, then you definitely need to. We've had some corkers recently with Day Dan John returning for his fifth time. Is it fifth time, Peter? Five, five times. Five times, so yeah, five times. So um, yeah, great episode. That was episode 100. So we've been around for you know, coming on two years now, um, which is probably you know two years longer than most podcasts last. Uh, <laughs> everyone has an intention to run a podcast, but you don't. The reality of having to do it every week is is uh, sets in quite quickly, and hence the fact that me and Peter are doing this today is because. You know, ultimately, we just could get it done, get it done. So, um, absolutely. What else are you going to do on a Thursday afternoon? Exactly, exactly. Um, so, Peter, how are you? I'm, I'm very well, actually. I'm. It's weird. I've been kind of drifting for for the last well few months. I mean, like training's all right and stuff like that. But I've got, you know, when you get something in a in a in a groove. So training's in a groove because it's what I do for a living. Um. And it's it's just very nice. And, and it, I'm in a groove with the guys in the park who I train outside and, and what have you. Um, but I've just been like kind of drifting, thinking like, what else can I do? What else can I do? You know, because I've got time to do other things and I enjoy my time, but I'm I'm just in I'm in the midst of thinking. And, I, you know, not that I need to do something else, just just more just some fulfillment, because this is all kind of stuff I'm comfortable with now. So I need to get some discomfort in my life. Um, and I'm about to do that, actually. But it's it's just quite funny how you get to a certain point and then you're like, do you know what? I'm I'm coasting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's where I am. And I'm actually feeling quite positive about it. I go on holiday in a couple of weeks. Um, I think when this goes out, I'm actually on holiday. Um, I go on holiday in a couple of weeks, and, and then when I get back, I'm I've got a a, a clear run up till right until Christmas to to Get my head in the game and start something new Spirit or different or whatever. Spiritually uncomfortable, emotionally uncomfortable, physically uncomfortable. Uh, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> it's more. It's it's going to be more mindset type stuff, like yeah. getting getting myself out of my own way of things, like of thinking, like, could I do this? Could I do that? Could I? Do? It's like, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Of course, you can. Just pick one, do it. Yeah. So, but I'm getting some help uh, with that. I'm gonna. I'm about to uh, dive into a new coaching program, um, and my, like a mindset thing. So, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I'm, it's it's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. I think well, one of the one of the things that I I I drift into quite easily is siege mentality. Yes. Um, I think that's something that's uh, ever present in my life. Um, you know, it's it's um, I, I'm I'm I, what I quite enjoy is the pace of running my own business, pace of a lot of the industries I've been in. I like to be able to make decisions. I also am very um, used to things constantly happening. On yeah. both on one side, that's really good because it means I have a very high pace to things. That's the way I like to run my business. I like to make decisions very quickly and run run with them. Uh, on the other hand, I feel sometimes that I'm just completely overwhelmed with the amount of stuff and can be a bit crushed by it and be on that teetering, that brink of like, uh, am I going to be able to get it done? Am I going to be able to recover? Am I, ever, am I ever present in other things? I mean, where do you feel 
with you at the moment? Is it that you feel like you've got a lot already set, you're more comfortable with those things, or is it that you've got, is there a kind of vacuum anxiety? It's like, hey, I've actually got things under control, but I feel a bit like there's open space that's not being utilized. When I mean, where are you in that? I feel like it's the open space thing. I've, 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 I've got time in my day when I can do things. So a meaning, um, I've, I've got some time that I don't fill up. Um, what, how would you say? Uh, constructively. So I just okay. So at the moment you're just chilling out, just doing yeah. it. So I train, yeah. um, I train the guys in the park. I do my online stuff, which doesn't take me very long each week, depending on how it's going with the guys. And then I might have to change up the program sometimes, you know, how it goes. Like, you're like when a program goes, like when Paul sends us our program, well, you know what it's going to be, right? Each week. Yeah, horrible, you can, <laughs> Yeah, well, you can guess what it's going to be yeah. because it's yeah. going in a certain direction. But then it gets to a point it has to all kind of, not all change, but you don't know where it's going to go next because you reach your point. That's it, yeah. That's yeah. where he's got the expertise, right? That's it. It's the, uh, it's the, it's, it's the, the edge of the unknown that you get yes. pushed to. And then you start feeling, well, whatever it is, sometimes it's that the session becomes too long. Sometimes the session becomes too heavy. Sometimes you have a technique blockage. And you say, look, hey, we need to rethink this. Uh, and that that's really where I suppose yeah. the coach's mind comes in. It's like, ah, this we're on this path. And in order to get you keep you yeah. going forwards, we need to think it like this. And that and that's where I never that's where, as you say, we kind of know that it's going to go up by one rep, 2.5 kilos, you know, one set, whatever it is, you kind of get a pattern, but uh, it's the, it's those jumps that are more yeah. where, where so, it comes in. So yeah, so with what we were talking about is like the, so the online stuff. I, I, I get that, and that doesn't take me very long. But then I haven't got that many people on that. The more people I get on that, the 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 longer that will take. But still, it's I could split it across a couple of days easily. Um, as in, it's like an hour and a bit one day, and an hour and a bit another day, and, and what mm -hmm. have you. So I usually do that over the weekend. Um, so and I've got time to go and walk the dog and stuff. So I've actually got time that I could utilize better. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's been very nice um, to have that time. But now I'm like, I, I, I just feel like I could do more and I can help more people, you know, because that's what we do, don't we? We'll help people in, in, in situations. So I'm like, right, how can I use that time? So it's it's time when people are usually at work, mm. um, you know, so that when I train the guys, it's before work, after work, um, lunchtime. So the times in between that is when people are actually working so I can actually help them out online or some somehow i've got to figure that out um well that's it i mean i suppose it's that time it's a weird it's a weird thing because you kind of got like you've got the time to be working on yourself but in a way you've got an urge to think about how you can i mean is it wanting to help other people with that time is it because you're trying to avoid something on yourself or is it because you actually genuinely no, it's not. It's not avoiding anything. It's like yeah. I've got everything. Everything runs smoothly. Yeah. So rather than trying to get more people into the thing that runs smoothly and then it, like it, it, taking it to breaking point, I'm like, no, I can keep that running smoothly and do something else as well. Yeah, yeah. And I have, I've thought about it a lot, and I'm like, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to just go and do something else for the sake of it because I've got time. It's like, no, I want something that is gonna challenge me but is also gonna um that i'm gonna enjoy which is yeah. part of this group that i'm going into is is that's what it does it helps you find that so it's one of those things it doesn't it, it's you, you don't learn oh this is a strategy to do this and this is a tip and then you do you do this it gets you there you do a couple of facebook adverts and wallop it's like you go into it and they go you you do what you want to do but our framework will help you get there whatever it is Mm -hmm. You know, so it's more of a, and it's more of a mindset thing to say the, the likelihood is that whatever it is that you do want to do that you're not doing is because you've talked yourself out of it. Yeah. Several yeah. times or several million times. Um, yeah. And that's true. And they always say, so I've been looking for something like this, but there's so much crap out there, as we know, um, in, I mean, there's, it, there is in everything. People are just trying to get your money, aren't they? So there's so much rubbish out there, but this got recommended to me by uh, Kirsten, actually, friend of the show. Oh, nice. um, she she recommended this to me, and um, 
it's just one of those things, you know, when you're looking for something, you don't, you don't know what, where to go. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, yeah. But, but when you finally get to the idea that you do want to make the decision, the coach, the whatever, the thing appears, doesn't it? Mm. And, and I've, a lot of people say that, and I've heard that a lot. And I've, I, the more it happens, the more I believe it. The, per, the, the coach turned, like Paul turned up when I was, um, um, you know, stuck at a plateau and, and, and just yeah. stuck in what I was doing. And then Paul turned up and I was like, go on then. And I'm, I've been with him for nearly two years. Um, so well, this I felt is... like about, when I first started working with Paul, I almost felt like giving up at times because I was starting to really struggle. Yeah. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm glad I persisted because, um, you know, two years down the line, I'm pretty strong now. You know, I'm well, this is there. this is the thing. I mean, there's many things, but but if you just chuck it all by the wayside and give up in the moment, that's a long, that's a a short term, a long term solution. Sorry, to a short term problem, isn't it? Yeah, well, um, so it's the best way to 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 fail, isn't it? To is to quit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. There, there are times when you need to come come at a problem from a different angle. I mean, there there are times when you're hitting your head against things, but uh, uh you know, I think uh, the the job of the coach is to provide the best possible p- uh, path to their knowledge, and, and the and the job of of, of the of the uh, of the client is to be the best possible student. And I think if you can combine those two things, then at least uh, you can you can see where that journey will take you, and eventually, um, you know, it's a platform to make other decisions, whether it's to stay with someone or, or to move on. But yeah, you've got, you've got to be the best possible student as well. Exactly. And so that's what I think what I'm going to try and cultivate is because there's many people, you, you get this and I know we spoke about, I mean, we had a 20 minute chat before we even pressed record, didn't we? But um, we, we, um, I've got that, there's a drill going on upstairs. You know, I was talking about the pattern interrupt. I've just yeah. forgotten what I was going to talk about because all I can hear is this drill upstairs. I know you can't yeah. really hear it on here, but anyway, um, it's cultivating people to into starting something. So, like I say, you know this, and I know this. You get someone along, they've got all the best intention in the world to come along. They're like, right, I want to get started. I want to get stronger. I want to get fitter. I want to lose weight. Yeah, I want to yeah. do whatever it is. And the, the, are you committed? Yes, I'm committed. I'm going to do it. And then something happens, and they fall off the wagon or whatever. And then and they're not as committed as they thought they were. Yeah. Or they've taught themselves out of it or something happens. You know, it happened to me with a guy who did five weeks. He had to have a a hernia operation. He was recovering from that. And I was texting him and like, are you all right? Are you blah, blah, blah. After, after his doctor had said it was all right for him to come back and all that. And he said, Oh, I need, I think, I just think I need to take a break. And I'm like, you've already done five weeks. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I get, I get that. I get that a lot. Actually, sometimes with the, with the amazing 12, the 12 week program is like, because it's set as a mentally people set it as a challenge. They hit the challenge. They do twelve weeks, and then it's over. And 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 I get that. You know, sometimes continued training is beyond budget. Uh, sometimes there there is a pattern interrupt, which is hey, there's a holiday, and that's what they've gone for. Um, but 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 you, it, it's we all know it's it's a it's a long <laughs> it's a longer journey than that. I mean, I like to think that I'm a pretty good student for Paul, uh, mainly because I'm still here, I'm still doing it, mm. despite a shed ton of stress from like pandemics redoing business kids all those things i stay i train pretty much five times a week there are days there are times when i've hit like physical you know physically i've been on i for whatever reason i've not been able to do it or there's times when my business timetable just takes over my entire day but that is rare and Mm. i you know i might i'm probably not the strongest by any means of any of his students i'm probably the not nice and most skillful but i am I'm pretty persistent, <laughs> you know. Um, that's uh, as a trainer, that's all you want. Yeah, I would say is it does. You know, is the person's getting the result that they want based on their ability, and you know, you get you, we we send in videos. So you know, that that's how it works, and that's what I get my guys to do as well. Mm-hmm. The ones who send me videos, all like all the videos, I watch them all, and yeah. then move the program on we know where we're at the ones who don't i'm like what do you want what do you want me to do this week because i don't know what you've done oh i couldn't do it because i was i was busy doing this i was over here and i'm like right we'll just repeat the week yeah and And i don't know how that how 
I don't know how that makes them feel, but to yeah. me that I'm like, right, okay, hang on. What, what are you paying me for here? Cause I'm just, you know, it doesn't sit well with me and that's my problem, but it never sits well with me that I want you to get it as much as you do. You know what I mean? Part of it's the conversation at the beginning and you don't always get the conversation right. Do you? So, no. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've moved to literally asking people and it is simple and it's, it's maybe not the most, well, I think, I think it's quite illuminating but it, it's simple which is on a scale of 10 one being unmotivated 10 being i want to crush my goal straight away and i need to do something today where do you sit and if someone tells around to me and they say they're six out of ten i say well, you're not going to get the result you want you've got to be an eight nine ten preferably a nine and ten the problem and if you with are, that then we need to work out why you're not an eight nine and ten and maybe it's just confidence maybe it's a lack of application but if it's just that ah, ah, i don't care the then you the you problem know, with that is, though, if, so, if somebody could say, I'm a nine, and you're like, right, let's go, and they're a nine there and then. Yeah. Well, you've got to say, you've got to get in a way, you've got to say why you're a nine. Why is yeah. this? And dig down into it and say, okay, so so what's going to keep you a nine? What's going to be, what what happens when you're tired and you're cut and it's cold outside that you've got to turn up at 7 a.m.? Why are you going to be a nine then? And they say, well, look, my I'm diabet- pre-diabetic or my, you know, or my kids, I can't play with my kids, or whatever it is, you know, and and then you've got a bit of, you've done your due diligence on that individual, and then you just got to hope they rise to the challenge, haven't you? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, th- this is why I'm, th- like, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to look at things a different way for, for especially for online stuff, because it's quite hard to keep people going online. Um, I mean, most of the guys I've got online are, are great. Um, but a couple of them are strong first instructors anyway, so you know mm-hmm. they're going to do it, aren't they? Let's face it. Yeah. Um, and what I'm go- what I'm looking at now is so it goes along with the Dan John thing. You know, we quote Dan John a lot on this, um, and he was talking about the floss in your teeth thing. You know, if you say to someone, right, you want to you want to train with me, do you? Okay. Um, can you commit to it? What are, what are you out of ten? Blah blah blah. And they, they tell you, go right, okay. Let let's let's test that. So go in, floss your teeth every day for 30 days and and then come back to me. Send, like, take a picture, send a video, whatever. How You know, you don't want a video of yeah. someone flossing their teeth, you know what I mean? But just check in, tell me you've done it, yeah. or whatever. And then if they don't do it, you're like, right, how are you going to stick to a program if you can't floss your teeth every day? I mean, like, yeah, flossing yeah, your teeth, yeah. a, a, it's a random example. It could be anything. That's yeah. simple. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to get people to do is just write down five wins a day, every day. For, for for a month yeah and if they can do that right that's brilliant How, number one it'll make you feel better because i was talking about this you know what you know when people go oh, i've had a bad day because of this, mm-hmm. and this and blah blah and, and, and they'll say the calm the amount of people i've had is oh, no wins today and i'm like what does that mean you haven't had anything positive from today. i've had no wins no can't find any right even so this is what i talk about is like the smallest win is a win right yeah. but people struggle with that however you know when people have had a bad day lots has gone wrong and you, if you got them to say right write down what has gone wrong with your day and then read them back to me the likelihood is they're going to be tiny little things that have just got into your head and annoyed you or or got in your way or took some energy away from you okay yeah so they get exacerbated but people struggle to apply that to wins to the positive side of it because they go, well, that was tiny. And then they make it smaller. Yeah. Whereas a tiny problem can become bigger. Do you know what I mean? That tends to be how, how our brains work. And I don't know why. So I think the thing is, is, is that in, in kind of modern world, we're just, there's just so much stimulus. I mean, that's yes. what I get frustrated with is just, I'm, I'm, I'm overstimulated in so many ways. You know, I'm having to do so many tasks and I think, what I what I meant mentally struggle with is how do I become actually present in my own life? Mm. Despite you know, I'm doing a lot of well-being things. I think if I was doing this, if I was having a similar job without my focus on well-being, I'd be a total mess. Um, you know, I'd be much seriously overweight. I'd probably be, you know, a uh, candidate for kind of metabolic disease and all those kind of things quite easily. Um and I, I at times have a feeling that I am like King Canute trying to get the, uh, yeah. the, the ocean to go back. And, um, and that is, I think, one of the, 
that is a symptom of running my own business. It is a symptom of my own mindset and it is a symptom of modern pace of life. And all of which at times, if you are not ever, I have a feeling, I think where the, where the, it's easy to have that negative mindset and it's easy to have that, 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 uh, to start speaking in the wrong language, but it is, it is easy to feel like you are constantly fighting an encroachment in your own personal, in your mm-hmm. own personal space. And probably the mindset is to think, actually, I am the one carving my way through this quite successfully. I am the, I am the snow plow, as opposed to the, the person who's been subject to the avalanche. Um, and I think trying to get your mind around that is, is my big challenge is my big challenge is to mm-hmm. say, right, I'm the snow plow. I'm the one just going through it, making my own path rather than the person shoring up the, the shed. So it doesn't get knocked down when the avalanche hits, you know? Yeah, but the the problem with that, I think, is that it's just a lot of effort. It is a lot, a lot of effort. Exhausting. And you can be the snowplow, but how long for? You yeah, know, yeah. that's that's that's. I mean, fair enough. A snowplow might work for a couple of months a year, mm. and then you don't need it, depending yes, on where you are. Okay. But you don't need it for the rest of the year because it's it's done the thing, mm-hmm. it's kept it back, and then and then it's got warm again, and all the snow's yeah. melted. Yeah. But if it's if you're living in Siberia or somewhere and you're constantly doing that, you know what I mean. It's it's it it takes a lot of a lot of energy, mm-hmm. and so the do the well being things like like doing it doing a workout, doing a session, getting stronger. That I, I find that great, but that's not one of that's just something I do. That's not one of my well being things. Like the the writing down wins, the journaling, the yeah, yeah. the um you know, the, the spending, actually spending time on me, but spending time mm. on my mental state is what keeps me going. Um, which is something you don't get a chance to do if you're constantly, if you're constantly somewhere else. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I've been hearing a lot recently as well about decision fatigue, you know, so yeah, you, yeah. you know, you're making decisions all day, every day without even thinking about it, subconsciously as well, without even thinking about it. So there's something like, I heard a stat the other day of, and I, whenever I quote stats, I don't know whether they're true or not because I just heard it somewhere, right? But I think it was, it was. I think I'm pretty sure it was from a reputable source. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it was like something like you can only hold nine thoughts in your head at a time, or something. But we have bloody how are eighty thousand a day or whatever it is, something stupid, isn't it? Yeah. So you can only hold nine in your head. You can only pay attention to up to nine at a time yeah. but you're having all that you're having these tens of thousands of others subconsciously so imagine what that does in your brain yeah. especially if some of the if, if a lot of them are, are negative you know what i mean or you or you give or a lot of them are positive but you they just happen subconsciously so you give you give um credence is that the word to to the to the to, to ones that show up which may be negative as well so you know it's 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 massive. It's a huge thing. And, 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 and we've, we were just talking about before we press record how, and I was saying, I mean, I'm in another group with a lot of trainers who are talking about this as well. And people are either more flaky this year um, or there's, there's people leaving when, when you wouldn't think that the would people who uncharacteristically leaving sort of thing as well. Um, and obviously a lot has changed over the last couple of years with the pandemic and everything. And people, it's, it's, it, it seems to be, there seems to have been a shift in, I mean, there's a cost of living crisis and all that. Like, there's lots of things happening. And I think people are just tired of yeah. all of this stuff and they can't work out what to do. Well, yeah, exactly. Cause I think there's so many options out there and they all seem that everything promises things all the time. But I think in reality, people are kind of like, well, these things haven't worked, you know, mm. I'm, I'm unsure. I don't trust things. There's a lot, lack of trust in the media. There's yep. a lack of trust in professionals, in the science, in the sciences, you know, as you know, there's so much, for example, there's, there's a lack of trust in, in, in the NHS and politics. You know, we don't trust our government because, you know, we're losing a prime minister at the moment. We don't trust the, the guidelines around COVID. Do we wear masks? Do we not wear masks? Do we take a vaccine? Do we not take a vaccine? Do we trust our institutions? Do we trust our media? Are they telling us the truth? Do they have an opinion? Are they are they uh, are, are they on our side? Are they fear mongering? You know, you see it constantly everywhere. So it's just like this lack of trust is a fatiguing thing. And then me and you sit down with someone and say, "Hey, let's do 
let's let's hit a six kilo weight loss in the next six weeks and let's do it yeah do you want to be able to squat 100 kilos they're like i don't care (laughs) do i i don't know look i mean all i know is that 60 percent of the time it works every time yes what's just happened there is what i want to i mean whether you want to post it this in uh, in the facebook group or anything i'm talking to, i'm talking to you guys here the listeners whether you want to post this in the facebook group or not um what has bob paul has just been gone through there how did all that make you feel what physically showed up while he was saying that because that stressed me out so i like to do that not, to you no but obviously not like i'm you know i'm not going to go and do anything silly or anything like that but it's like you know just when you talk about that in my brain, I'm just going off oh, for God's sake, like all this stuff, you know, and it's like, which, which is why it's like, you can let that affect you. You can let all of that stuff affect you, or you can just ignore it or, or let it into your life for an hour a day or however long. And then, well, that's it. Then, that's it. It's, then it's like do what you dosage, would actually normally do anyway. Cause we can't retreat. We can't become, we can't, we can't become, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, people just live in a, in a hobble. Mm-hmm. Do, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, I mean, we have to, we have to confront it. So I think, I think it's just having parameters in which we engage with it. And I think that is, again, one of the things that I am aware of is that I have to spend, you know, I, I want to spend time with my children, but I want that time to be with my children, to be engaged and to be present and not have those other things encroach yeah. on there. And, and I think it's about, I'm sure there are people, People who do it extremely well, uh, who can who can def- not defend themselves against it, who can compartmentalize their time and the uh, their engagement in certain areas of their life um, and be fully present. Um, I'm sure some of our guests can do that, but also I think a lot of our guests struggle with it as much as we do, and yeah. as much as our listeners. You know, one of, one of my guys did something great. He um, he just he just cancelled his TV license. Um, and he doesn't he doesn't have a TV license, so he's got no access to any of that TV. He can only watch streaming services. Um, so therefore, he gets to choose what to watch. It's not it's not pro, it's not programming put in front of him. He gets to choose what to watch. The and big challenge for me and the kids though is that they can put with all that choice. All they watch is Pokemon. Well, um, whereas at least at least when he had the BBC. You know, we were the kid, or you know, when you when you were a kid, like back in the eighties and nineties, you know, it was kind of like children's TV started at seven, finished at like nine thirty. Yes. So after that, they were you 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 watched adult programs. So you and you didn't have a choice of what was coming on. So there's this idea that actually there was some curation in it. You got your eyes were open to it. You were locked into a system, which is what the BBC or ITV wanted to give you but you also had the opportunity to be exposed to things you weren't comfortable with or you didn't want to watch. Whereas now one of the big things I get with tantrums, particularly with a three-year-old, Oh, it's not Dino Dana. It's not um, deadly 60 or whatever they want to watch. And then you put, Hey, why don't we try something different? And, and you can see that they, as young minds are kind of con- addicted into one thing, you know, Oh, I want another Pokemon. I oh, know I want another, this, I want another, that. And you could watch 50 because there's a billion episodes of any of these kids programs mm. and they could just go on loop with the streaming services and just see the things that make you feel good. You know, the echo chamber. Um, yeah. But you can, you can, but you can still, if you've got an inquisitive brain, I'm not I'm like, I mean, as kids, you might do, you might not do. I don't know. But, but if you've got an inquisitive brain, mm. you, you, you can, you can, you don't have to go into an echo chamber because you can no. choose what to watch. Yeah, and choose something that might make you think, and might make you feel kind of angry, and might fire you up because yeah. you want to that day. Mm. It's like what we were talking about the other week with um, do you use tough love in training and what have you? It's like if you're feeling resilient that day, you might want to watch something like that because you're like, you know what, I can handle it today. And then other days, you might just go, you know, I want to watch something that's funny and just going to make me laugh mm. because, because, mm. just cause. Yeah. So it's it. I just I just found it like. This guy says when he's done it, he runs a recording studio as well. He's he's like he's a musician. Um, he's the guy in, uh, he's a lead singer for Sergeant Thunder, who Jeff Sogel likes the band Jeff yeah. Sogel likes. And he he was he he just said it's quite funny because he's got a, a technician and a, another guy who works in his in for him in his studio, and 
he said that it's quite funny because they continue. Oh, did you see this on the news and blah blah? And oh, this is annoying. And, and he was like, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't get involved in that. And he's like, have you seen how angry the pair of you are? And he's just standing there, all kind of, yeah. kind of zen, you know. And he Old just says, man it's shouts at clouds. Yes, exactly, exactly. So it's just, it's very interesting. I mean, people can do what they want, obviously, but I just find that since I've, I mean, I don't really watch the news. I catch it every now and then. Just to kind of, it's kind of like watch, you know, catching the odd ep- episode of EastEnders every now and then, just to see if if somebody you go, oh, they're still in it, other okay, <laughs> and then don't watch it again for twenty years. This week, this week is the last week of Neighbours, apparently. And oh, Sean, wow. Sean cotton? was, Sean was over in Guernsey, right? The, 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 our dad still watches it, right? <laughs> He's in yeah. his seventies and he still watches Neighbours, and they're cancelling it because it, nobody watches it anymore. And it was only on Channel 5. It's not, I, don't, I don't think it's even still shown in Australia. So what about Home and one, Away? Yeah, there's only one guy on Guernsey who watches it, who's Sean's dad, right? And that, that's what's kept it going so long. So they're getting all the, old, all the oldies back into it. And it was like, oh, oh that's her, and that's, oh, there's plain Jane and blah, blah, and all that. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent there, but... but Are you telling me that you watch Neighbours, basically? No, I don't. Okay. However, we watched it yesterday, because Sean was like, have a look at this. So, and I haven't seen it since, like, university, about 30 years ago. <laughs> is Toady still in it? Yes. He is, wow. But anyway, anyway, um, this is the thing. You can you can you can watch what you want. So like like with the news and stuff like that, I just I just I try to ignore it. I mean, obviously things yeah. are going on in the world that you know you you kind of want to keep keep abreast of, but I just try to ignore it because it gets in my head and then it gets it it I don't know it negatively affects me. So like I say, every now and then I'll watch it just to see just to see what it's saying. But but a lot of it is just is just it's just scary. Well, the thing is, is like, what's the balance between the information you need to know in order to be an informed individual about the world you live in? Yeah. Versus the amount, the dose of opinion that you need to have in your life, because ultimately, a lot of these things are opinions and perspectives based on other people's uh, agendas. Um, and some of those agendas may align, some of those might not. Some new, yeah. You know, I mean, look, there are some newscasters that are more neutral than others, but but often it's like you are constantly being bombarded by agendas, and um, I think uh, that's that could be quite overwhelming, particularly when we're trying to make decisions in our own life. Um, I mean, to bring it back to the topic, what's that again? What's the topic? I don't know, but no. to bring it back to <laughs> this is why we have James to bring it back to health and fitness. <laughs> yeah, you know. If all of that is in your is in your head and you want to and you're like right I want to you know I want to find somebody to show me how to get get stronger and get fitter and stick to a program and get my head around that and everything and your head's full of all that other stuff as well you know it's just it just it automatically makes it more difficult mm. and it's already difficult enough you know this is why I, I don't know I've been thinking a lot about my mindset recently um, because it was a big thing ages ago, loads of people were going on about, it. and now it's all about this. This, I mean, I mean, I know you run a twelve week program, but it's more. It's like this twelve week program, this six week program. This will help you. This will help you. This will help you. And it's all these like finite things, um, which are, which like as we say are great, but then at the end of it, what what actually happens when it ends? Well, you the know, thing is, is often there are hook that there, there, there yeah. are means of communication. To be able to get across the message, because yes. unfortunately, the, the main the main mode of conversation in the fitness industry is short term, and so most people also think in short. It's not that they are thinking short term, but it's it's something that they can again because of the amount of mental processing they have in their life, they can think, yeah, I probably could do something for six weeks, and then when you sit down with them, you say, actually, maybe you know, I know you came in for six week program, and we can do that. But here's how I can actually make this stick, because ultimately you don't want to be just doing six week programs. I'm going to show you in six weeks how you can live a healthy life long term. And if you want to do that with us because you're enjoying it, then fantastic. If not, then, you know, you've got some skills that you can apply. And I I, I think it's just it's just a hook. But I think the undercurrent, I think that that's hopefully. I think I think that that's hopefully what I would get across to anyone who, who, who sat down with me. But I also have to speak the language of the current world, which is, 
you know, the TikToks, the, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, stuff like that, which is, which is, is, is sometimes a counterpoint. Um, yeah. It's, 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 it, it's um, speaking the language of the audience, but giving them your perspective on success. Um, and the thing is about training and stuff it is actually once you get it down it's quite simple it's very very meditative and it's quite yeah. and it takes away a lot of noise the thing is i always say to my clients when they come in it's like when they come in frustrated i say look kettlebell's not going to answer back you know you can scream oh. and shout at it and it you will listen but it's well, not going to give you any gift how many people say to you as well oh i'm really glad i came today i felt rubbish this morning and i'm really glad i came in because mm -hmm. i didn't want to get out of bed but i, I did anyway mm -hmm. and now i feel I feel like I, I feel better for it. Yeah. You know, I, I've got, I've got someone like that who I train online every now and then, uh, well, every now and then quite a lot. I'll not get any videos that week. And then yeah. on the Sunday, how's it gone this week? Oh, it's been a rubbish week. But yeah. then when they do send videos, how's it been this week? Fantastic. I feel amazing. Right. Remember that and do it again this week. Yeah. yeah. End of that, that week. How do you feel? Amazing. I did find you know, and then the week after no videos. Uh, and I'm like, remember the feeling you said after each yeah. session, you're like, I feel great. Just, just take that with you, get momentum from it. Yeah. You know? I mean, I've got a client, I probably mentioned him loads of times, 68 years old, you know, uh, he's, he's pressing weights. He's never pressed before. He's doing, he's doing chin ups. He did a hundred chin ups in a week, you know, and this is all just like constant consistent application of the basics and showing up week in week out he is my client who sends me videos every week to be mm -hmm. fair like if you are listening to this and you are not a trainer you feel like you need coaching you guys probably need to approach me or or peter because because you know it works you can get it done simply you know it's it's um you know there are loads of it will find a coach find a coach you can do it and just apply the principles week week in week out yeah, you know, you can always think there's an, a, another approach, a more optimal approach, whatever. But if, if you can consistently apply basic principles and you click with the trainer you're working with, it, it's going to happen. It's just going to happen. Absolutely, Some people, yeah. it happens really quickly. Sometimes it takes them a year. But if my 68-year-old client didn't do anything, he would have continued getting the results he was getting. Now he's a beast. Yeah, Exactly. And your guy, he got SFG2, Strong First Level 2. That's not easy. That yeah, Jed, tough. his his goal was to press the 36 yeah. kilo, which was his half body weight bell because he's over 50. He's actually, it's I think his half body weight is like 44. Um, so he got that. He was doing it for reps. Yeah, He, he pressed the 40, you know, mm -hmm. so it went above him. Like, he was like, I want to be able to press the 36. I think he could press the 32 like twice. And then within three months, while I'm pressing the 36, and and he got one rep with a 40 as well, and it was like, well, there you go, yeah. yeah, you know. And he's 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 coming up to doing 100 pull-ups. What are we on Thursday today tomorrow? He's mm. got 10 sets of 10. Yes, yeah. that's, that's. I mean, we'll see. I don't know whether he's going to do it yet or not, but he's 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 capable. It's just whether he's he's how he's feeling on the day. Yeah, and, that, and then that's quite a lot. So we'll dial it back after that. But that's I'm, well, I'm looking, I'm looking to forward to tomorrow because I might get a video out of it this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. I'll be like, hey, we get we get kind of kicks out of seeing people succeed. I oh, mean, totally. I, I'm just saying, if if you're if you're someone who is just thinking, oh, I'm a bit stale. Oh, I'm struggling to press this way. I can't do this. Can't do that. If you've got like Peter, Peter on your side, man, you're going to succeed. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen if you do what he said. I mean, that's what I, you know, I mean, it's just like, that's the power of working with people. It's, yeah. it's, it's also trying to, you, you said this, we, so James's brother asked about pr a program where to start and all of that, didn't he? In, in one of the episodes way back. Hmm. Um, and we, and, 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 and you came up with a program, but just a generic program that yeah, yeah. would work for, for it, it was generic in the fact that it's like you work out where you're at start here um and and what it what it, this this is what was interesting because if someone's stuck they're going to try and push to get to where they want to be rather than step back and mm -hmm. build yeah and that's what you said wasn't it you start with a lighter weight and I've, I've got an example of this as well but you start with a lighter weight and then 
you, 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 you keep moving forwards because if you start too heavy, you've got nowhere to go. So there's a guy, that. there's another strong first instructor who I'm training and we started him off and he can, he can do squats with 224s and all that. He's in his 50s as well. Uh, late mid fifties, I think he can squat with two twenty fours and all that. But he's squatting two twelves at the moment, yeah, and um, pressing two sixteens, which is very light for him. But that's because we've been working together for like a month and a bit. So in six months' time, he's going to be pressing those twenty fours again. He's going to be squatting the twenty fours again, or the twenty eights, mm -hmm. which I, uh, I think he can squat the twenty eights right now, but not 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 for many reps. Yeah, and he'll be he'll be squatting them no problem. And I'm fully confident in that. And I know he will be. And he'll be stronger because it, it, it would just have, yeah. it will happen. It, I mean, he will be stronger. And he's he'll already strong. And he'll be, and he'll be, he'll be tougher in every aspect. Yeah. There's just no way that's not going to happen yeah. if he's doing that work. And Absolutely. because you know where he's got to go and you know you're going to keep him accountable and you know that he's going to have the technique to get him there, it's just a question of getting there. Yeah. You know, so, that, so the result is going to happen. It's just going to happen. It's just a question of whether or not he decides to follow your advice. Yeah, it's, I'll, I'll, yeah, honestly, it makes, you say it makes, I, I always think like it's weird this because it makes my job easier. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a hard job. And it's not an easy job when, when you've got to try and motivate people or get, or get them to form their habits and stuff like that. Um, but it's just much, it's just very rewarding when someone gets a result and you try not to get like hugely emotionally involved because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard then if you attach yourself to someone, because when they're doing poorly, you end up, you it's end like up, it ends up hitting you quite, quite hard when everyone's doing well, everyone's great. But if someone starts to do not so well, then it hits you. Then, then yeah. it's hard as a coach to to handle that. So you've got to try and kind of distance yourself a little bit. But if you can't celebrate people's wins and 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 really enjoy it yourself, it's it, you know it's 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 difficult, isn't it? It is. It is. Well, I think we've probably come to the natural end of the conversation. I reckon you're right. I think we went in with no idea what we're going to talk about, and we've. It's just I like I like conversations like that though because it feels like when you're in them, you're having a chat and you're like, what the hell am I talking about? And then, but then if you go back and listen to it, like if you go back and listen to this podcast, we'll be like, actually, yeah, yeah there's quite, quite a few gems in there, isn't there? Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, you always have this vision that it's a bit like when you've talked, you know, when you're 15 years old and you talk to your first girl and try and ask her out, and you go, eh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that, that's kind of what I think is happening when I'm talking on the podcast. It's like. And Paul, what do you think? Yeah, blah 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 blah. Uh, but it actually apparently comes out mildly coherent. Yeah, yeah. You go blah 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 mindset. Did a do do yeah 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 kettlebell do 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 reps. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. So like I a think, dog, you know. Yeah, I think blah 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 Sid. Blah 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 do 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 Sid. So in James's absence, um, I won't ask him what he's up to and how and if he has any final thoughts. Or, but Peter, do you have anything that you'd like to um, leave our lovely listeners with? Uh, not really. Yeah. You know, when I like when it's one of these sorts of things, we've done all the talking, haven't we? So yeah. you know, when we've got a guest on, it's great because you can go, oh, oh, you've opened up so many avenues, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go away, take all those away, go and think about it and all that. But this yeah. is just a stream of consciousness, isn't it, from us anyway? It is. So it is, yeah. And maybe someone's actually made it to the end of the conversation and Maybe That's someone awesome. hasn't, and this bit's completely irrelevant, and you know everyone's turned off by now, so uh, yeah. probably say what I want. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you can test that out. We can test let's, it out. Let's not. No. 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 I think uh, we don't want to. We've got a hundred episodes in. We don't want to ruin it now. Exactly. Um, so yes, uh, look, as ever, guys, you need to subscribe to this podcast. You need to like it uh, on Facebook. You need to share it. You need to um, give it as a Christmas present. You can do whatever you want, but it's got to get out there um because the only reason we've got 100 episodes in is because someone's listening to it uh so if you're listening to it thank you um but please do subscribe write a review uh just spread the word um and we shall see you next week uh i don't know is, is james gonna be back next week uh, nope. he probably will. no he's not okay so maybe it'll be another one of these with me and p 
Peter. Who knows? Uh, in the meantime, thanks, Peter. Good chatting. And uh, we'll see you all, got, uh, see everyone soon. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Health Odyssey with Peter Land, Paul Bassett, and James St. Pierre. To get your regular fix of hype free health, you can subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your favorite podcasts. You can find out more on today's and other topics at healthodyssey.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram by searching for Health Odyssey.